Welcome to LAPFCU's webinar titled Budgeting and Money Management. My name is Myra Kasuk, and I am the Financial Education Coordinator here at LAPFCU. This webinar is scheduled to go for one hour. That includes questions, and it is being recorded. This is an interactive presentation that at times requires participation in the form of you either raising your hand during a question portion or asking a question at the end of the presentation. For those of you attending a webinar for the very first time, please allow me to draw your attention to the GoToWebinar toolbar. This is the toolbar that was launched when you joined the presentation. To the left of the toolbar, you will notice four icons. The fourth icon is a hand and an upward arrow. Please click on the hand icon once you locate it. Okay. Great. This is an interactive, again, presentation. So at times I will be asking for your participation and that participation will be in the form of you raising your hand whenever I ask a question. To lower your hand, simply click on the hand icon again. So at this time, if you can all go ahead and click on the hand icon again, it'll lower your hand. And if you don't um, do that on your own, I can simply lower your hand for you. If you have any questions, um, we do also have a question section. Notice there are two panes in your toolbar. Under the audio pane, you should see um, the questions tab. You're going to click on the plus sign located to the left of the question pane and type, I see it. So if you can go ahead and click on the plus tab and then just simply type in, I see it. Great, thank you. In the essence of time, all questions will be addressed at the end of tonight's webinar as many of your concerns might be answered within the presentation itself. Now, if you're anything like me, you may sometimes lose your train of thought and forget what your question is by the end. If that's the case, um, because your questions are important to us, please feel free to jot down your questions during the presentation so that you do not forget to ask me at the end of the presentation in the event it was not already addressed. And right now I'm just going to go ahead and close out your responses. Thank you again for all of you that responded with, I see it. That lets me know that you're able to hear me clearly and that everything in your GoToWebinar toolbar is working the way it should. Okay, so budgeting is perhaps the best way to save and spend money wisely. Tonight we will explore positive financial habits to help you stay on track, as well as to help you handle your finances. We'll do this by providing tips on how to take control of your financial situation, calculating your net worth, and how to create a budget as well as monitoring your progress, in addition, you will learn valuable ways to manage the flow of your income and expenses. So by keeping a record of the money you spend during a one month period, you should be asking yourself, um, what patterns can you see in your spending habits? Um, another question is, how do you decide what to purchase and what factors influence your purchasing decisions? We will also cover the benefits of comparison shopping. Okay, and one moment, I have a question that's coming in here. I'm just trying to see. Okay. By a show of hands, how many of you truly understand your financial situation? And in order for me to let me be a little bit more clear, how many of you find yourself going with friends to eat at Fleming's when your pocket is really screaming? Denny's. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm guilty of that too. Thank you. So 
does your current financial situation cover enough to take care of all of your expenses? So for example, do I currently make enough to contribute to my savings? Will I be able to pay for health insurance if I retire? If not, how much would I need? And lastly, how much money will I receive from Social Security? In order to determine and truly understand your current financial situation, you will need to create a budget before you can make an informed decision. But how can you create a budget if you do not know exactly what your net worth is? So in just a moment, I'm going to cover how you can determine what your actual net worth is. So net worth is basically assets minus liabilities. A simple way of defining this is simply what you own minus what you owe. So first you want to take a look at a couple of things. You'll need to make two lists and get a calculator. Um, if you don't have a calculator, cell phones usually have a calculator tool on it, and you don't necessarily need to do this during this presentation. In the essence of time, a lot of us may not have enough time to actually um, figure out everything that we have with um, what we own versus what we owe. And a lot of that is because we'd have to get bills and things like that, and we don't normally have a lot of time to do that in such a small uh, segment. However, make sure that after this presentation or whenever you have some free time, make two lists. You'll make two lists and get a calculator. In the first list, you will include everything you own. So that's anything that has some significant value. For example, uh, cash and checking, uh, savings accounts, if your home is paid off, any investments or stocks that you get. So you can pretty much get the picture of the things that you own because these are the items known as your assets. The second list will include your debts. And these are, for example, if your home is not paid off, your mortgage, any loans that are outstanding that you have out there, uh, taxes. So we will call this your list of liabilities. So your two lists will be your assets and your liabilities. What you would then do is find the total sum of each individual list and subtract your total assets from the total debt. The resulting number would then be your net worth. And I have a couple of questions coming in that I'm just going to address now only because it would be too late to address it at the end. Uh, yes, this is a video that is uh, visual as well as audio. And you will not, I won't be able to hear you. You will only be able to type in your questions. Um, if you are having some challenges with actually viewing the presentation itself, this is also being recorded and I will send out the recorded link um, approximately two business days after um, the webinar has completed. So once you have your net worth, if the number displayed in your net worth is a positive number, it means you have a surplus of money. And this is a good thing because it means you are on the right track. You're actually ahead of the game as you have more than enough income to pay your debts, and it means you have money left over. Okay, so you want to be in the positive. If the number displayed after you subtract what you own versus what you owe, if the number is negative, it means you are living beyond your means. You are falling. Uh, behind um, because you do not have enough money to pay your debts. By continuing to borrow funds, you cannot repay, so you are damaging your credit. So you never want to be in the negative um, when you're looking at your net worth. This webinar is going to provide you with tips on how to increase your net worth and how to budget your money wisely. Your net worth will increase every time you increase an asset or you decrease a liability. So creating a budget can help you focus on cutting back on spending and assist with paying off those debts. 
The first thing you want to look at uh, when you're talking about creating a budget, you want to start off by identifying all of your take home pay. So this is the net shown on your paycheck for those of you that are working. Or any supplemental income, which could be interest, uh, rental income, retirement, investments, if you have a side job, anything like that would be additional supplemental income. Next, you want to calculate your monthly expenses. So say, for example, again, I'll say your taxes, because we're in that season right now, rent, mortgage, uh, child care, insurance, anything around those lines. Based on the number displayed when you calculated your net worth, what is the goal needed for you to have a surplus? And again, that is what do you need in order for you to have a positive number that should have displayed when you did your earlier calculation. So when we talked about your net worth, if you had a negative number, what amount is needed in order for you to have a surplus? For those of you that wish to push yourself a bit further, you can increase the money you would like to have for savings. So maybe you only need a hundred more dollars for you to be in the surplus. But if you really want to set a goal for yourself, increase that number, okay? Place your budgeting goals in categories. So for example, uh, grocery, a grocery budget, uh, gas, um, entertainment, you put them in different categories. Now, if math is not your favorite subject, which I will be perfectly honest with you, it's not mine. Um, it's probably my worst subject. I know the basics. And you think you could use some help, or if you want to just double check what you came up with, we have something new just for you. Our newest vendor, Coffee, has some great tools to assist you in managing your money wisely. Now, Coffee stands for Knowledge of Financial Education, and it was created by Consolidated Credit, which is a 25-year-old national nonprofit credit counseling agency. Coffee is not insured by the NCUA or any other governmental agency, is not a credit union guarantee, and is not a deposit or a condition to any banking service or activity. What Coffee is, however, is it provides financial coaching and educational instruction services for consumers by using online tools and personal interaction. Some of the financial tools included with Coffee, but definitely not limited to, are building a budget, and maximizing your financial future. You can get access to Coffee's website from our LAPFCU homepage or simply by typing in the URL address shown on your slide. So the www.coffeetime.com slash LAPFCU. Coffee has over 100 financial education videos and more than 30 publications that you can download, one of which I will be sharing with you at the end of this presentation as a gift simply for attending this webinar tonight. In addition, they provide free financial coaches, which are available to assist you with questions on how to pull your credit report and tips on how to get the repair process started. Um, financial coaching isn't just for those with credit concerns. It is also for those looking for tools to stay on track and manage their money wisely. So it, they definitely have a plethora of different types of uh, tools that you can use. To view the coffee portal from our website, you simply will access www.lapfcu.org and then what you will do is you will hover over the services and resources heading to display the options available in that category. You will then go down, it's the ninth option down from the top, and click on financial education and coaching and follow the prompts that are displayed. You will from this screen select register and then click continue when the third party site disclaimer is displayed. Once you register, 
which let me state is free, by the way, there is no charge for you to register with Coffee and utilize their tools. You can access the many features that Coffee has to offer. Um, a tool I found particularly interesting that I am that I have incorporated into tonight's webinar um, is headed Count Your Beans. This section has budgeting tools and information to assist you in understanding your credit, debt management, as well as banking basics. You simply would hover over the Count Your Beans heading to display a list of options. So just like you did from LAPFCU.org when we hovered over our services and resources to select uh, the financial coaching, you would then select um, build a budget from this area here. Earlier in the presentation, I went over how you can calculate your net worth, and I asked you to get a calculator. Well, if you can input the numbers, Coffee will actually do the rest for you. So let me show you now an example of what it looks like. So when you go to this, when you go to the Coffee site and you click on Count Your Beans, it will bring you then to this page. And the Count Your Beans section has tons of tools. So they have worksheets, um, quizzes. This is a great way to track your spending and retrain your brain on better ways to manage your finances. You would simply input your income sources and select add income to generate your monthly growth. This chart does not subtract any income deductions though. So for the purpose of a true calculation, you should be entering your net income as we discussed earlier, not your growth, because again, it's not going to take out any of your deductions and that's not actually the amount that you're bringing home. Once you have added your income to the worksheet, you simply select add income. And that's that little orange box that's located on your screen. Then we'll end up getting to the fun part, the expenses, yay. Um, <laughs> expenses, okay, maybe it's not so much fun talking about expenses, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming either as long as you are in control. So before I talk about expenses, I would like to share a very short video with you on managing debt. This video will cover the various types of expenses that you might see um, or use when you're actually doing this budgeting worksheet. You can't achieve financial freedom without budgeting. Why? Because people who can account for their money are in control of it. You can't win a game without a game plan, right? And you can't run a business successfully without a business plan. So you can't successfully run your household without a budget. The first step is to write down your expenses, what they are each month. Generally, expenses are separated into three categories, fixed, flexible, and discretionary. Fixed expenses are the items that you have to have, like rent, car payments, and insurance. Credit card debt is considered a fixed expense because it usually remains the same each month. List all major credit cards, department store credit cards, and gas credit cards. Then make a list of your flexible expenses, like groceries, utilities, gasoline, and medical expenses. These expenses are ones where you control the amount of money you spend. Sometimes flexible expenses are items you need, like groceries, but you can control how much you spend on them by choosing less expensive items. The next step is to list all of the other expenses, not fixed and not flexible. We call these discretionary expenses. They're items that are not necessary for survival. Now make sure you don't leave anything out. Don't forget your morning cup of coffee or your newspaper. You may have a cable bill or magazine subscription. The key here is to include everything you spend money on. Look back over your credit card statements, your check stubs, or bank statements to see where you've been spending your money. There are helpful worksheets available to guide you through the process, as well as suggestions of how much you should spend on each category. Now, these worksheets will give you your expense to income ratio, and if it's out of balance, then you're spending more money than you earn. The first place to cut back 
is your discretionary expenses, because these are the items that are not absolutely essential. As the video discussed, there are three types of expenses. We have fixed, flexible, as well as discretionary. Now we already added our income. Now we need to add our expenses. So when you hit next, it would then take you to your fixed expenses worksheet that you see on the screen in front of you. As you just heard, these are examples of what you pay every month that do not change. An example of that could be your mortgage, uh, rent, a car loan, even child care, depending on the parameters set around that. The Build a Budget section in Coffee allows you to input your fixed expenses. Just like you did when you did your income, you simply would select Add Expenses to generate your fixed expense total, and then click Next to access your flexible expense worksheet. Like fixed expenses, flexible expenses can be considered a necessity. However, the amount can change on a month-to-month -month basis. So, for example, take your utility bill. It's something that you need. However, the amount of power needed determines the usage, which in turn affects the total due for that month. Um, other expenses like groceries, uh, gas for your car, um, even purchasing on-demand movies from your cable provider can fluctuate based on the usage. And just like the previous screen, once all the flexible expenses are entered, you would simply click Add Expenses to display your total, and then Next to access the final worksheet, which is titled Discretionary Expenses. Now, discretionary expenses are similar to flexible expenses. However, they can change. The biggest difference between the two is that flexible items are considered a necessity that can fluctuate, while discretionary expenses tend to include items that we can do without if we needed to. So, for example, if you like going out to the movies every month, it sounds fun, but do you really need to go every single month? Um, this sheet is utilized for those items that come up that we would like to make time for, like going out with our coworkers after work, uh, shopping for clothes, sports events, traveling, you know, all the, all the fun stuff, okay? However, it's time to select which ones you can actually do. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well after we look at how this totals up with our calculation. So once you've entered all of your discretionary expenses, you would simply select Add Expenses. And then this time, instead of clicking Next, because this is your final worksheet, you would click Submit. So now I've entered everything. So before I did the webinar, I, play, I put in my own uh, fixed, flexible, and discretionary expenses. And once you do that, this next page, the screen that you're looking at now, uh, is your current budgeting strategy. This is great because it displays a breakdown of percentages of all the categories you entered. So it's basically a footprint of your current budgeting and strategy needs. In this example, you will notice that almost 51% of my income is spent on housing. So that's my mortgage or rent. Um, there's not much I can do in this area to change that. However, I can snip from my personal section which I happen to know contains my daily Starbucks run. I've gotten better. I used to go at least twice a day. Now I'm down to once. And yes, I do have a guilty pleasure of purchasing a uh, venti caramel macchiato hot with soy upside down at a cost of $5.85. Do not judge me. I could also cut back in purchasing clothing as much of my purchases are spur of the moment purchases. They're not necessarily, um, they're not a true necessity. It's not something that I have to do. I kind of browse the stores and say, oh, that looks cute. I want to buy it. Using the question box, as I told you um, earlier, I explained that this is an interactive uh, webinar. Using the question box 
type in some of the areas you feel you could cut back on to reduce spending. Fast food, okay. Going out to lunch, yes, making your lunch and bringing it in is definitely cheaper. Hobbies, okay, eating out. I see a lot of eating out, clothes, okay. So there's a lot of different things. Movies, okay, buying food. Travel and entertainment. So there's a lot of things that we can cut back on if we needed to. If you happen to be like my husband and love math, you can do this on your own. Um, I simply, you would simply just subtract your expenses from your income, okay? Me, I tend to use the tools that are provided to me and coffee works great for me to be able to do this. If the results, so basically the slide that we just finished um, said if you were to simply subtract your expenses from your income, you're gonna come up with a number. And you're looking at a couple of things. If the result is a positive number, first thing I want you to do is to double check your information to ensure you haven't left anything out. So for example, did you incorporate an emergency fund? We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, do you have money saved for future goals? If you answered yes, and you still have a positive number, that's great. You are living within your means and you're doing a fantastic job right now saving for the future. If you answered no, it did not come out to a positive number, I still want you to recalculate, um, subtracting your new total expenses. So just make sure that your calculation is accurate. And once you have your total, if it's positive, great. If it's still negative, um, that basically means you're living beyond your means. You will need to either increase the amount of income that's coming in or decrease the number of expenses. And in some cases, you need to do a combination of both. If you need to get rid of an expense, you want to start off with those discretionary items. And again, these are the items that we know we can do without. As stated in the previous slide, if you have a positive number, you want to make sure that you include everything. And one of the most forgotten items, and I briefly brought this up in the previous slide, is an emergency fund. The longstanding rule is to save 10% of your take-home pay. So for many of you, that may be too high. However, you can start small and build up towards that amount. So today, I want to show you how to save strategically. So let's start by looking at this a couple of ways. When you think about saving, the first type of savings that's important to us is we want to think about saving for emergencies, whether they are short-term or long-term. Emergencies are items that need to be addressed within the next three to six months. In the event that you unfortunately lose your job or you have an unexpected repair, it could be a roof repair, anything, um, that arise, you'll have those funds put away for a rainy day. So those are, that's your emergency money. And so again, emergencies are things that you want to look at that are three to six months. Now, short term is anything that's between one and two years. So maybe you want to save for a vacation or put a deposit on a home or a car that you've been waiting to purchase. These are short term goals. And then, of course, we have our long-term goals. And these are all the things that you want to calculate into um, how much money you have to save when you're putting together a budget. A long-term goal is anything that is over two years. So uh, retirement, uh, college fund, if you, you know, if you're, whether you're looking to go to college or you're saving up for uh, your kids or your nieces or nephews, grandkids, what, whatever the case may be. Um, consist of saving for a comfy retirement or your child's college fund. So some tips for saving include some of the following. So when I asked you um, what are some things you can cut back on, I want to talk about some tips. So I don't want you to just think, well, she's asking me what can I do, but she's not providing me with any tips. I want to talk to you now about some tips for comparison shopping and different types of strategies. Using your toolbar, 
raise your hand if you like coupon shopping or if you shop online. Okay. Okay. So I see a lot of hands went up with that. Um, businesses are really in competition right now, and they're in competition for your funds. So one of the tips when you're comparison when you're trying to save money is to comparison shop. Never buy the first item you see. Shop around. Uh, search the internet. Look for grocery items that are uh, store brand versus name brand. Uh, make lunch instead of make lunch and dinner versus eating out. And I think someone put that on there. That that's one of the things that they could, uh, you know, take away from their discretionary is eating out less. So make lunch or dinner versus eating out. Order a movie at home for one price versus taking the entire family out to the movie theaters. Nowadays, um, things that happen that come out in the movies are, you know, on our TV screens in like a matter of like a month. You know, they don't stay out there for long. We used to have to wait forever for those to come out, but now you can actually save money and just wait for those to get, to come on the screen. Opportunities to save are definitely everywhere. Um, I shared with you my guilty pleasure, and that was buying a latte latte from Starbucks. So. You don't have to eliminate the things that you enjoy doing. However, choosing better alternatives um, could definitely save you money. So many people are discouraged from taking a step back from spending because they think of it as an, you know, it's all or nothing type thing when it doesn't really have to be. So take this example. I told you basically I shared that I spend $5.85 on a latte every day. Um, I did the math. That is over $2,000 on coffee a year, okay? To save money, I found other alternatives. Um, I could go to McCafe Latte um, at McDonald's for around $3.39. It's still pretty expensive, but it's you know cheaper than me spending the $5.85 that I was. I can also opt for a cup of coffee at 7-Eleven, which is just a dollar. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the potential savings for the year, when I did the math, was over $1,700 that I could be saving just by going with an alternative option that was cheaper. You can reduce the cost even more by just making your coffee at home, okay? And that could save me money again right there. And for those of you that are foodies out there, um, you like to eat, I saw a lot of you respond that you eat out a lot. Um, you don't have to, again, um, stop going out to your favorite places. Just cutting back on those guilty pleasures does not mean you can never have them again. Just look for more inexpensive places to go. There are inexpensive family restaurants. Um, many, many family restaurants also offer specials, so you'll be sure to save. Sometimes they say, um, come in on a Wednesday and, you know, kids eat free or something like that. So there's definitely options out there. Don't just go with your gut and start spending all the time. There's definitely ways for us to be able to save money. Setting your financial goals, no matter how big or small, takes planning and discipline. If your goal is to save $300 a month, and let's say you want to save $300 a month because you want to put it towards the purchase of a home and you have not received a promotion or any additional income, you will need to make some financial sacrifices such as eating out less or less happy hours after work or cutting back on uh, manicures or pedicures or reducing those impulsive shopping sprees. Taking a moment, access the chat box and type in a goal that you would like to reach. Okay, so take a moment right now. Go ahead and type in a goal that you would like to reach. Okay. I see um, a lot of paying off debt, uh, purchasing a home, travel more. 
okay, paying off credit cards, so paying off debt, again, so be able to save. Um, these are definitely everything that people that you are responding with can be done. Again, we have to go and look at um, what our current spending is. And the first thing we want to start subtracting is those discretionary, the things that we like to do but don't necessarily need to do, okay? And some of the things I have here on your screen, as you see, it's a save, pay off a debt, uh, purchase a vehicle, uh, tying the knot. There's different things that, that everyone is looking to do when they're trying to figure out what type of goal they want. But all of our goals have something in common. Um, or they should. And what I mean by that is that your goal should be smart. So I see a lot of great goals that are out there. After the webinar has completed, I want you to sit down and ask yourself the following regarding your goals. One, are your goals specific? Does it state what you want to achieve? Okay. And I see that um, a lot of you, they're very specific. You have uh, paying off debt, paying off a credit card, uh, traveling more, okay? If you're thinking about traveling more, um, for those of you that put that, it needs to be more specific. So where do you want to travel to? How much will it cost for you to travel there? So that's what I mean by specific. You need to come up with a dollar amount of how much that's going to cost. Um, are they measurable? How much money will you need? Is it attainable? which basically just means, is your goal realistic? Can this be done? And if so, ask yourself, how? Are your goals relevant? Does it fit with what your goals are? So for example, maybe earning extra money, pet sitting isn't a good idea when you are allergic to pets, okay? So, you know, you have to think about, well, how can I earn more money? But it needs to be something that you can actually do as well. Okay, and then lastly, is it tied to a time frame? When do you want to reach the goal? And again, I started off by saying that all your goals should be smart, okay? And don't forget to monitor them to make sure that you are making progress. If you are working now and you're making a certain amount of income, if something happens and you're not making that, you need to go back and revisit those goals. You need to constantly monitor them because you'll need to change some of the money that's coming in. Or maybe you got a promotion and you can do some adjustments there. So you want to constantly make sure that you're monitoring your progress. Now there's lots of different ways that people monitor uh, how they are spending. Uh, what current type of cash management systems are you using? So think about the types of financial systems you're using. Uh, remember I just earlier was talking about coffee. It's a free financial. They definitely have a lot of free financial tools. They also have free financial coaches ready to assist you with your general budgeting concerns and a multitude of money management tools to help you stay on track. So we looked at one tool that they have, but they have a wealth of tools that, that are out there um, to be used. An example, um, some sim people simply put their funds in uh, envelopes and they label that particular bill. So when the envelope is empty, then that's a cue that they've reached their limit for that month. Okay, um, I have a couple of people have used that um, to reach their goals. Um, using the chat box, take a moment and respond to this question. What tool are you currently using to manage your money? Okay. And if you're not using a tool at all, just type in none at this time. Okay, so I see that um, we have a couple of people saying they're using a built-in Excel sheet. Um, there are some mobile app tools that I see out there, and some people even put paper. 
um, all of which are definitely great tools. It really comes down to whatever works for you. For those of you that did respond by writing everything out, again, the envelope uh, budgeting system is simply when you divide your money up into categories. Has anyone ever used the envelope budgeting system before? Okay. Okay, so I have a few people that have used that budgeting system before, and I have the example on your screen. You basically, again, you have a number of envelopes and you just mark on the envelope what each item is for and place the money in that envelope, and when it's done, it's done. You just don't go over it. Again, budgeting takes time and patience, and it is an ongoing process. So monitoring your progress monthly and making changes as they become necessary. Um, an example could be an expectant parent will want to budget for upcoming expenses like diaper and daycare and school, while those experiencing a decrease in the number of family members, whether it's uh, the kids went off to college or they got married or unfortunately the passing of a loved one, you will need to remove certain items that were part of that initial budget. So again, you wanna just make sure that you're monitoring it and you're keeping it up to date as you are uh, saving. Another monitoring tool to assist you with money management is the ability to view your FICO score. Your FICO score is a good indicator of how well you're doing with paying off all of your bills and paying your bills on time. You would simply log on to Patrol Online, your banking account, and select the Manage Money link from the toolbar and click on View My FICO Score. As long as you are the primary account holder and have a loan with us, and you've had your account with us for a few months, you should be able to view your score. Scores that are not available, however, are for members without a credit history, um, obviously, then if you don't have a loan with us or for those that have opted out of this free benefit. In summary, by determining your net worth and creating a workable budget, you can control your financial future. And it's important for you to remember that you will need to monitor your progress and make changes when they occur. You should always be mindful of your income and expenses and manage them on a monthly basis. In addition, do not forget to comparison shop. Whenever possible, never go for the thing that you see first. You always wanna make sure that you comparison shop at all times. You may find something cheaper um, because those pennies do turn into dollars. Now, a few of you have been typing questions during this time, and at this point, I will open up the webinar for any questions. Um, again, your, in order for you to um, write a question, I think a lot of you are familiar with that now because we've been doing this um, throughout the webinar tonight, and so you, you're pretty good with typing in those questions. Simply type in your questions to me. If you're in the process of typing a question, simply raise your hand so I am aware that there are pending questions out there that have not been answered. And at this time, I'm just gonna kind of go through some of the ones that I see. If the go-to webinar control panel shows the microphone and the word muted in red, does this confirm my computer audio is muted and you cannot, and I cannot hear you? Yes, I cannot hear you um, at all. I'm just utilizing your uh, chat box and using the question screen. Okay, I answered this one already. Okay, so I have a question here. Would you count equity as an asset even if your loan isn't paid off? That's more of a mortgage uh, question or concern, but I can definitely find that out um, for you. For example, I, I have a home. If it's, if it's not paid off, I definitely have uh, equity in it. If my house is worth more, 
than my loan actually is, but technically it's still not my home yet. You would still have to, if you're pulling equity out of your home, um, to use it for, let's say, for example, you're refinancing your home and you, or you're using a home equity line of credit. If you're using it, then you're still ending up having to pay money back. So it really depends on the scenario. Um, if you, if I haven't answered your question with that, that may be a little bit more detailed and I can definitely find out an answer for you and respond since I, I do have uh, your name here. Okay. Um, let's see, here's a question. Should everyone in the household be on board with managing money? I will respond to that by saying, having the support of the family is very important. If everyone is not on the same page, the program um, you set up is likely to fail. Um, when someone spends um, outside of the budget, for example, it will cause others to stress in the household. And then they, them themselves may give up on the program. So I would suggest just having a discussion with the family and getting everyone on board with the goal. You will tend to have a better success rate if everybody is you know, on the same page with, with working with budgeting in the household. Okay. Well, I have a lot of questions up here. And hopefully I can get to all of these before the end, but if not, I can also send out a um, question and answer when I respond to all of you um, after this is over. And I send out the email because I will be asking, uh, sending out the link to the recorded webinar as well. Okay, let's see here. I'm just going through some of your questions. Calculating, should home equity be considered when calculating net worth? Yes. And let's see. Does Coffee have info on how to improve your credit score? and also info on how to remove negative info from your credit report. Yes, they do. Um, again, they have uh, free basic information. And if you needed uh, someone to actually step in and, and assist with that, they do have uh, that service as well. But yes, Coffee it does provide uh, tools on uh, credit reporting and, and things like that. Okay, let's see here. Is net before or after taxes? Net is after. So um, your paycheck generally has a gross, and then after they take out all of your taxes and deductions, you have your net um, income, and that's your take-home pay. Uh, do I have any suggestions about low interest rate credit cards? You know, that's that's really a question that really it depends on uh, your credit score. It depends on a lot of other factors. It's it's too general out there, too broad um, for me to be able to um, have a say on whether one is better than the other. I'm not sure I really understand the question. Um, however, again, I will be sending out a, a link for that as well. We also do, for those of you that are interested um, in the interested in credit, we actually have an improving your credit webinar um, that will be happening next month. It will be on Wednesday, February 21st from 7 to 8 p.m. And I believe we have that on our website as well. So you actually can register today for that one as well. But it's called Improving Your Credit Webinar. And your presenter is actually the person who runs our uh, collections area uh, here. So it's a wealth of information that uh, he can definitely provide. And some of your questions may be able to be answered within that as well. Um, for credit cards, the main thing is to choose one with no annual fee and to pay them off every month so that there's no balance or charge. But look at doing balance transfers to cards with 0% uh, interest rates. Okay. Let's 
see what are the questions we have here. So we're only counting net income. Doesn't that exclude taxes? Yeah, when, we, when I refer to taxes, when we were talking about uh, your income, we're talking about, um, for example, when you have your tax reporting. Um, when you're counting your net income, we're talking about what your, your take home is because we're looking at what your take home pay is versus any type of uh, expenses you have coming out. And so anything that's coming out of your payroll with your taxes has already been taken out before uh, you actually calculate that net portion. Did, I, did that answer your question or were you looking for something a little bit more specific? Um, here's okay. So I have a person here that says I have learned a lot about what to do and not to do financially when you get ready to retire. If you plan to, do you plan to create a webinar or retirement prep that we can listen to? That will you listen to uh, my input? We do have a uh, Wills and Trust and Financial uh, Planning Workshop uh, coming up in March. Um, the logistics of that is still being finalized and we will be marketing that soon. Um, and that is a workshop. So for our workshops, you are able to uh, ask questions and provide you know, your statements or concerns um, during that workshop. It's, we're looking to have it close to uh, our academy branch off of Elysian, Elysian Park over by the Dodgers Stadium. Again, we're still confirming everything, so make sure that you continuously look at our LAPFCU.org page, um, our marketing material that goes out, and we'll provide any updates if the um, location has been changed. Okay. In the essence of time, I'm going to share one additional tidbit with you. If I was not able to get to your question, I still have a ton that I see that are out there. If I was not able to get to your question, um, I will go ahead and um, answer the questions within the, um, when I respond with the link. So any, any question that was not answered, I'll provide um, the questions and answers that came up during this uh, webinar as well as I do generate a report that has all the questions and answers. As a gift for attending the live session this evening, you will notice that within the GoToWebinar toolbar, there is an attachment. So you should see um, an, an area that says handouts. If you can all see that, go ahead and just type in yes in your questions pane. Okay, perfect. This is, um, it's called Shop Smart and Save. This is one of the many free downloadable booklets. Now, I just said free. This is from your, the coffee site. And they have a number of booklets that are out there. But this is one of uh, many free downloadable booklets offered by coffee. It provides tips on smarter spending, including suggestions on how to save money, um, on transportation, car rentals, food, and more. Um, it has a section in there on determining your net worth and creating a workable budget and how that is the key to putting you in control of your financial future. In addition, um, please remember that you should all be monitoring your progress and making changes as they occur and always being mindful of your income and expenses and managing them on a monthly basis. For additional assistance with financial planning, the credit union is also proud to have Chris Ellis, who is our partner with CUSO Financial Services. Chris is an experienced finance and education professional with an MA from Loyola Marymount University. He holds a Series 6, 7, 63, and 65 license and has hosted many retirement and investment workshops. He also will be one of the presenters that we will have at the upcoming Wills, Trust, and Financial Planning Workshops as well. Um, and he is here at the Credit Union. His phone number is area code 
1-800-273-1170. His main office is based out of the academy branch, which is there off of Elysian Park, right where the police academy training occurs. And he, but he will also come uh, to you to other branches as well. So we just need to set up an appointment with him. Additionally, you can access the coffee portal via the LAPFCU homepage, which I discussed earlier, or directly from the URL address that you have on your screen. I have also included LAPFCU's toll-free number, 1-877-MY-LAPFCU. That's 1-877-695-2732. For all of your membership concerns. For additional information on Coffee Portal and or its features, I do recommend you viewing the pre-recorded Introduction to Coffee webinar. Um, that is located on our LAPFCU webpage under Offers, Events, and News. Coffee coaches are free. I want to stress that free, free, free. They are free and available to assist you with questions on how to pull and understand your credit report budgeting and can provide tips on how to start getting back on track. They also provide assistance for more complex situations like consolidating credit cards, negotiating lower interest rates with creditors. There is a one-time setup fee of $69 if you wish for someone to actually manage your debt and negotiate on your behalf. And a monthly service charge may or may not apply based on your income. Again, there is no fee to talk to a coach or to obtain tips and gain understanding, and there is no fee to use the tools provided in their, on their site. Timeframes listed on your screen are Pacific Standard Times. East Coast Times are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday um, for East Coast Times, they are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Although they do not take calls on Sunday, members are, um, they do take calls on Sunday. Members are unable to schedule an appointment for that day. So they are open on Sunday to take calls, but they do not do appointments on that day. And your Pacific Standard Times are listed on your screen. So basically 5 to 6, Monday through Thursday, Friday 5 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturday 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to all that attended the live session. We at the Credit Union realize your time is valuable and it is our hope that you enjoyed tonight's presentation. Until next time, thank you and good night.